Hello mates, it's my time again. Bunch of stuff here. I actually got so much stuff I've got to do two mail bags in one go. I've got another pole as big as this. So that'll be next week's video. But in the meantime, we've got this one. If you're first time here, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon to get notifications about future videos. And if you like what I do, then give us a thumbs up too. And kiss my face. Right. This is a bunch of super balls, which Think. Oh yes, okay. Hold my little flex cable circuit boards. This is for a future potential project. I'm not actually set on it yet. So FPC 10 pin 0.5 millimeter adapter. Right. So you got the flex will go in there. Little press fit locking, and it uh, goes out to a dip type connection. So you can use it to adapt. Or if you really want to, you could probably take the connector off and put it onto another board. And that's at the rear board. Has got a one mil version instead. That's nice, but in this case, it's this one I want, and I'll show you why eventually when I get the other part. I'm tangled well today. It's a bit tough this one. It's tape. There we go. These are some little metal project boxes. Not short the dimensions these are actually. So look. Let's see. So these are about 50 by 50, I think. Yeah, 50 by 50 mil and about 30 high. So I've got these for potential projects. I'm not sure if I will actually use them or not. But this sort of thing you, you always keep on hand anyway because you will use it eventually for something. Um, what I had in mind is using it from some RF circuitry, which I am um, working on. And I was thinking I could probably build them into these boxes. So they're shielded and to reduce interference and that sort of stuff so I may or may not use them and not sure I'm, even I'm going to bother that particular aspect of the project. So this is the board I've designed and basically this one basically works actually. It's got the dis display that goes with it here. This is a LoRa gateway and this plugs into a LoRa module and what I was thinking is actually mounting the LoRa modules into these boxes is drill like a hole in for the antenna mounting. It's got a SMA a chassis mount antenna on them so you could and maybe just grind a piece out of this or something, maybe even just a hacksaw slot might work, um, to run the cable through into the box so the lower module is completely shielded from everything else and potentially like bolt them all together or something like that because this runs two lower modules and so you could put two like that but I'm not even sure I'm going to need to do it, I'm not settled on it yet. All I'm doing really is just trying to create isolation between the modules to reduce possible interference because what I'm doing is running coax from the antennas on those modules up onto the roof of the vehicle. So I may or may not do that. Also there's a little tip I'm going to show you too. If you've got one of those ESP32 Def Kit V1 modules, which is what this one is, here's a little trick. So when you program these things with the USB, sometimes they don't actually program. You actually have to hold down the boot button, I think it was. No, anyway, you have to hold one of those buttons down to your program in order to get to actually start programming. But if you put a capacitor between the enable pin and ground, in this case 2.2 microfarad is what I've got on there, then you don't need to hold down your buttons anymore. It just works. Little tip for you. There are links down below for most of these items. I expect they will be anyway, depends what they are. I think these are some RTC modules. They look suspiciously like RTC modules. And yes they are. So I recently purchased a whole bunch of different ones. I wasn't quite sure what I'd end up using. This is a DS3231 as you can see. And it's also got a little flash chip on here as well. And there's a DS3231 up here. And you've got some programming jumpers here for setting up the I squared C codes, I'm guessing. So that's got SDA, SEL, recency and ground. But it's also got this set over here. I'll we'll have to require some more investigation that. But if you don't know what RTC is, it's a real time clock. So we're keeping time so you can once you've set the time on it, it will hold the time until the battery goes flat basically or until you change it. I was looking at these for a project where I need to basically get the time to just basically date stamping on file names in a um, SD card, a project related to this thing actually. This is right now it's doing a net time, this is going on the internet, grabbing the time and using that, but it takes time to do that lookup. First connect through Wi-Fi, get the Wi-Fi connection made, and then to grab the time and you know, use it internally. But if I can use an RTC module, once it's set, that would be okay for, I don't know, six months maybe. And then, you know, if once in a while I was getting a new one. So, you can save a lot of uh, boot up time on projects. So, that's what I'm looking at these for anyway. I did have some other ones before which I showed you. 
in a previous mailbag which is slightly smaller but basically the same kind of conf uh, configuration with independent inputs for the flash and for the RTC. Hmm. This was trying to be careful not to hack into it. Double sided foam tape, which is actually split in the middle as well. So it's. The width is this thing? It's 20mm, so it's also got a split at 10mm. I think it's 5 meters on this night. Like. I just wanted to get some nice foam tape. I didn't have anything of this particular thickness as well. I think it's 2mm thick, is it? Oh, no, I have to look now. Yeah, it's like 2mm. We've got two layers, 4mm, yep, so 2mm two, two thick as well. Just tape, not exciting. Well, I don't know what this thing is. Well, I don't know what any of these things are before opening them. This is curious. It's one of those things. Some um, iPhone screens. These took a while to arrive actually. Which is quite a while ago. And probably a couple of months. I'm not sure which ones these are. I think these might be sixes. I always get this particular seller's screens because they're good quality screens. I think these are sixes. Keep having to replace screens for a guy at work who happens to have a few iPhone sixes. He and his wife and stuff. So he tends to drop them quite a bit. <laughs> so I keep putting new screens on. So I've got some more. And these little protectors they do help. But uh, as do these. These are like the ones that go on the front and stick them on. But there's only so much abuse they can take before they end up breaking. So yeah. And as always, kind of little toolkit. Nothing too exciting really. I've shown these things loads of times before, but the links for these down below, these are good quality ones. Well, this, I think I know what's in here. Seems to be quite well wrapped up. Let's see if I can get into it. I might need something beefier than my ram knife. Let's see here we go. I've got to be careful too. the right way up. So let's just cut around the outside. Right. These are a bunch of LCD screens. Hopefully intact. So it's three per stack. And they seem to be okay. I don't think that's a crack, I think that's fine. So this is what I've got those little FPC connector boards for. It's for these screens. Where's the wrong number? Which side's it read from? This side. Here we go. Let's try and show you this. There's some information about the screen. What little there is, these are little Sanyo screens. Um, there was a guy on Twitter who had a hundred of these things and he was selling them cheap because he had a project and they weren't, and the project basically got cancelled. So he was trying to flog off all these screens. There's like something over here too. I don't know if you can see that or not. Something there. That flex is torn. This flex has got a tear in it. Yeah. Guess I got unlucky with that one. The other one seems alright. Hmm, interesting. Might have to get older the other and say, hey, one made a torn flex. He had loads of these things just sent him all off. I think he still had a few left, but not many. He got rid of basically all of them. It's a shame about the flex on that one. I bet you never have noticed that will stop it from working. 
Anyway, so these were for one of my other projects which I have done in the past. I showed videos on it as well. Where the I was using 2.4 inch OLED displays. I was trying to see if I've got anything laying around I can show you them on. I don't have anything right now. But they're 2.4 inch OLED displays, which was what I was using. And these displays are really good for daytime use, apparently. Um, I'm, I've never used them, so I don't know. But uh, the demonstrations I've seen showed them looking like they'd be pretty good. They're really good contrast, which is great for outdoor use. So I picked up a bunch of these because they were inexpensive. They're about a third of the normal cost. That's what the FPC balls are for. The next thing will be trying to figure out if I can drive them. If I can, then I can do some changes to my, some of my gear, some of my projects and install these to try and improve the usability during daylight because the things I'm using are done in broad daylight and it's really bright and it's, the OLEDs are they're like the best screens I could get for the job at the time and these might do a better job and that's what's marked on the back of the Flex I think that's the actual part number there I don't actually know what the, the screens were called if I find it I'll probably put an overlay or something on the video so you can see what they actually are but that might be it I can't remember so to compare it with the OLED I've been using, so these are the OLEDs I've been using for this project, 2.4 inch. And this is the display I've just got, this is the one that's got the broken flags on it, so I'm not too worried about moving it around a bit or potentially dropping it. So the width is very slightly wider, actual screen area, because this doesn't actually go right up to the edge of that frame. It's inside of that by a couple of mil probably. So it's very slightly wider, and height wise is and get the area there, the height is bigger as well. So these give it a larger screen area. And I believe there's also high resolution as well. So these are potentially much better for the project. Um, if they work okay outdoors, but I have to get one working first for a while about that. So I'll just show you this FPC connector and the screen itself. So these FPCs have got a um, the terminals on the top, so the bare flexes have to be on the top so the straps are not there after you open it up you need to swing it down and it latches in it is there but you can see it's a shame that this one's torn I may be able to repair that if I'm really careful scrape the plastic off and put some little bridging wires across uh, we'll see how we go I don't know, probably not I might just leave that as a backup but yeah that seems like an awful lot of work for that thumbs up if you like it subscribe if you're not to subscribe to that sort of stuff if you're interested in becoming a patron help support the channel help to buy more things in mailbag then links down below to patreon go and do that so subscribe like catch you later